Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on this webinar titled Financial Literacy, Empowering Persons with Developmental Disabilities to Be Engaged with Me. This webinar is sponsored by the Florida Developmental Disabilities Council and is hosted by the National Disability Institute. Um, but before we get started into the content of today's um, presentation, I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Nakia Matthews, to share with us some of the housekeeping, housekeeping tips for today's webinar. Good everyone. The audio for today's webinar is being broadcast through your computer. Please make sure your speakers are turned on or your headphones are plugged in. You can control the audio broadcast panel. You can control the audio broadcast by the audio broadcast panel, which you see here. And if you accidentally close this panel, or if the sound becomes a little bit uh, messed up, you can close it and reopen it from the top menu item by going to Communicate and join Audio Broadcast. If you don't have sound capabilities on your computer, or if you prefer to listen to phone, you can dial one eight five five. Two four four eight six and the meeting code six six five zero one six four eight and you do not need to enter an attendee ID. Reasoning is provided during this webinar for those who are deaf, hard of hearing, or for whom English is a second language. Captions can be found in the media viewer panel, which appears in the lower right hand corner of the webinar platform. If you make this panel larger, you can minimize the other panels like chat, Q&A, participants. Conversely, if you want to make it smaller, you can also collapse the media viewer. See a Q&A section at the end of the webinar. Please use the chat box or the Q&A box to send any questions you have to Michael Walsh or to myself, Nikia Matthews, during the uh, duration of the webinar, and we will direct your questions accordingly during the Q&A portion. Listening by phone and not logged into the webinar platform, you may also ask questions by emailing them to me, Nikia Matthews, at nmatthewsndi-inc.org. Please, this webinar is being recorded, and the materials will be placed on the NDI website at www.realeconomicimpact.org. If you experience any technical difficulties during the webinar, use the chat box to send a message to the host, Nakia Matthews, or you may email me at nmatthews at ndi-inc.org. Thank you. Um, when my name is Michael Rush, and I am the Manager of Financial Empowerment and Innovation at the National Disability Institute. As mentioned earlier, today's webinar is sponsored by our partners at the Florida Developmental Disabilities Council, and we'd like to thank FDDC for supporting initiatives that assist persons with developmental disabilities move up the economic ladder. For those of you who are not familiar with the National Disability Institute, we are a national nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C. Um, we also have a Florida office located in San Petersburg, Florida, and we also have two staff members located in Florida. Uh, myself, I'm located in San Petersburg, Florida, and my colleague Katie Metz is located in Jacksonville, um, Florida. Our mission at the National Disability Institute is to promote income preservation and asset development for persons with disabilities. At the National Disability Institute, we support our mission with a variety of activities, such as providing training on financial education and to introduce individuals to resources and tools that they can access that allows them to make informed choices on their own financial capabilities. I started with today's um, topic on financial literacy, empowering persons with developmental disabilities to be engaged with their money. I just want to share some additional information and kind of frame the issue on, um, on looking at the importance of financial education. If we look at the proper goals of the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, it dates the following. 
It states that the nation's proper goals, writing individuals with disabilities, are to assure equality of opportunity, full participation, independent living, and economic self-sufficiency for such individuals. 22 years later, great efforts have been made to advance opportunities related to employment and independent living. However, we have not fully focused on economic self-sufficiency. And today, we will be providing you with tools that can assist you or individuals that you support on building their own economic self-sufficiency um, by using financial education. <clears throat> I wanted to share some additional information with you, um, uh, looking at some background information on, on why we look at economic self-sufficiency and, and this important topic. We feel that no group in America is in more, more in need and more deserving of economic recovery than persons with disabilities, which is a part of all demographics. There are 58 million Americans with disabilities, one five. 20 families have at least one member with a disability. Persons with disabilities are three times more likely than their peers without a disability to live, um, or to live at or below the poverty line. And the dependence on public benefits for income, health care, food, housing become a trap that requires staying poor to be eligible the opportunity to travel around the country hosting various asset development summits and providing training um, on this topic. And, and through this journey I, I, in these travels, um, I, I see that it's been part of my job to eliminate um, some of the myths that um, uh, some might have when it comes to looking at the importance of delivering financial education to persons with disabilities. Um, and some of those myth busters that we wanted to share were that individuals with disabilities can and do work and generate earned income. Individuals with disabilities can participate in local asset building opportunities and financial education programs. Individuals with disabilities can save and build assets. And individuals with disabilities are, as we know, are an underserved population of low-wage workers. And when we look at financial education or financial literacy and, and making informed choices on how we use our money um, um, or the importance of being banked or how to appropriately use a credit card, we all look at the psychosocial needs of any individual, not just persons with disabilities, but to a person with dis a disability, saving money and developing assets will produce choices that directly impact their quality of life, especially um, running their mental and physical health, their positive self-concept and level of community participation. Um, when we have more money, um, we are able to participate in the community, um, our expectations and status with other community stakeholders um, also changes. And that's why financial literacy and education are key to empowering persons with de developmental disabilities to be engaged in their money. It builds an inclusive community and it also um, uh, supports building blocks when it comes to self-determination. So you might be wondering, what is financial literacy? Well, the President's Advisory Council on Financial Literacy defines personal financial literacy as the ability to use knowledge and skills to manage financial resources effectively for a lifetime of, of, a lifetime of financial well-being. And today we are going to look at um, two particular uh, financial education resources and tools that will allow an individual with a disability um, to build their own financial literacy um, that lead to a better economic future for, for themselves. Um, each of these tools that we're going to talk about today are um, to, available to the public at no cost. And both of these programs have been used by the National Disability Institute um, as well as with persons with disabilities. Today we are joined by representatives from both FDIC, um, who will speak about FDIC's Money Smart, um, 
And our second presenter will be from Wells Fargo, um, who will be sharing information on hands-on banking. So our first presenter to share information with you on financial education tools and resources is Bobby Gray, who is the supervisory, uh, supervisor community affairs specialist at FDIC, and she's in the Division of Depositor and Consumer Protection. Um, Bobby, I'm going to turn it over to you to share information on FDIC's Money Smart. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Michael. Um, again, I am Bobby Gray, and I am joined here this afternoon with the Chief of our Outreach and Program Development Section, um, Trevanna Kennedy. And Sandra is actually going to go ahead and start um, our segment of the presentation off. We're both located here in our Washington, D.C. office. At the end of the presentation, we will also share information um, regarding our Community Affairs Office in Atlanta, which is the local office for Florida. So thank you very much, Michael. Trevanda? Thank you. Just from a quote of Chairman Barton Grunberg, the FDIC is committed to consumer education so that households can make informed financial decisions. Financial is certainly not a cure-all. The ultimate goal of the Money Smart Initiative is to help low- and moderate-income families make informed decisions about their financial futures. Many families may see their futures and own their home, for example. Becoming knowledgeable in financial services and money management can help a family achieve that goal. Having a bank account is not necessarily right for everyone, but with financial education, consumers may never have the skills and knowledge to make these important decisions. Next, consider the need for financial education. I want you more. Or I want Bobby to tell you more about Money Smart. Thank you, Trevander. The Smart curriculum is available in two versions, um, instructor-led versions. First is um, the Money Smart that is available in seven different languages. As Michael mentioned, it is free. It's easy to teach. Everything you need to teach the curriculum is available. It comes with an instructor guide, which includes a script, a guide, a guide to presenting, and handouts available in PDF format and the PowerPoint slides. The Internet is also available in both adult and young adult tracks. It was updated and released in the early part of 2012. It is available 24-7. Individuals can work at their own pace. It covers the same topics as our structure-led curriculum. Range from the basics of banking through our most recent module, which is titled Financial Recovery, which is targeted to those who have found themselves in the situation where they've suffered a financial challenge and they need to learn how to begin to recover. There are also information on checking and credit. a version for youth, which is called our Money Smart for Young Adults. It was launched originally in 2008, and it too has been updated. It is aligned with um, relevant state educational standards. There are pre- and post-tests. We share characters to um, update curriculum around best practices. The Department of Education has also provided subject matter expert in our paying for colleges and course modules. Again, like the adult curriculum, everything one would need to teach it is on the CD. Um, the film is also downloadable through our FDIC.gov website. There is a 
online um, ordering, um, link that you can order the materials um, yourself. And again, they are free. And then if you have additional questions, you can also contact us through our shared community affairs mailbox. We all have a, another version, which is our portable video format, or MP3. It is available through our website and currently being updated. Or you can also, again, um, if you don't want to download through the website, you can order a CD. And it, too, is free. It's the same type of information, but delivered in a different format in smaller segments. But again, it covers checking, basics of banking, information on credit, and saving. We have available for potential instructors a train the trainer video, both targeted for those who are teachers of adults and you can look at it through the website or order the CD. Again, they are free. We also have a train the trainer in a box with, which has some of the tools and resources that FDIC trainers have found helpful when teaching a workshop. We offer some and train the trainer um, as requested as well. As you'll see later in the presentation, some of the organizations that we have um, collaborated with to offer train the trainer workshops. Again, these are free of charge, and quarterly each month we're going to offer a um, overview of the Money Smart curriculum online. Coming soon, the Smart for Smartphones application. The Americans module focused on preventing financial abuse. Two that are immediately we're working on there in part uh, with those uh, right now. The next get trainings and events that our Atlanta office has collaborated with other organizations to offer money smart to youth and adults. These examples include integrated financial education into high school for Palm Beach uh, School District, Trust, Trust Project Coordinators of High School and High Tech on Money Smart, and they trained Goodwill Industries of Central Florida on Money Smart. the national launch of Best Alliance with Money Smart for Young Adult Training Sessions at University of North Florida. And that, that's basically a peer-to-peer -peer training. The SC and the National Disability Institute Real Economic Impact Initiative. They follow the unbanked in St. Petersburg and Tampa with Bona with Tampa. He met with community groups and policymakers to discuss consumer resources and public awareness about mortgage and foreclosure scams. Our presentation will come to an end and we'll have all, uh, questions that will follow the end of the, the next presentation. No, I'm sorry. At this time, Bobby will give you contact information. As I mentioned, um, my name is Bobby, and I am out of our headquarters office. And please feel free. You can contact me at bgray at fdic.gov or submit an email through our community affairs, one word together, at fdic.gov. But this is the contact information for our local Atlanta regional staff, and the community affairs officer is Tom Stokes. Thank you. And I'll turn it back over to my people now. Great. Thank you, Bobby, um, for that information. 
Um, we appreciate it. And at the end of the presentations, uh, we will do um, uh, questions and answers. Um, also, um, after the next presentation, we will also be talking about tips um, uh, in when inviting um, financial education to um, persons with disabilities. And so um, we will be talking more about the FDIC Money Smart um, curriculum as well in just a minute. Um, so what I would like to do now is to turn it over to uh, Michelle Maynor, who is Vice President of Community Development at Wells Fargo. And um, uh, she is going to share some information with you on hands-on banking and um, uh, give you an overview of that program. So Michelle, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, it's Michelle Maynard. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to be with you today. A few minutes, I just want to introduce you to what we think is an exciting program. Three components that we think you like. One, it's fun. It's free, and it can help you, your family, your clients, your friends better understand how to manage money and reach uh, financial goals. If I right, let's see. There we go. All right. This time, as tough as the economy has been, it is probably more important than ever before uh, for to get a sound basis of understanding on how to manage our money and reach our goals. Uh, whether someone's a homeowner or just starting out, maybe a student, whatever, it's important. It's about basic banking, and sometimes it's all about basic banking, check and savings, how to manage those things in order to go to the next, next step. We in Wells Fargo, a vision and values booklet, and every employee gets a copy of it. And one of the things I like about it is it promotes the economic advancement of everyone in our community. That's what it says we are committed to. We demonstrate that commitment is by promoting financial education. We financial education holds the key. We developed hands-on banking as free, public service, completely non, uh, completely non-commercial, uh, no sales, no pitches, product. Right and the resources are available for everybody in the community. Uh, the banking program has been awarded the PTPA, which I never heard of until we did this, the Parent Tested, Parent Approved Seal of Approval. Uh, the PTPA constantly reviews new programs that improve the quality of family life through this parent testing. Uh, our program is also on the U.S. Uh, Treasury Department site, mymoney.gov. It has gone through a lot of different uh, reviews. So this screen is the opening page for the program. Primary content area. Adult, young adults, teens, kids, and there's also a section, as you can see, for entrepreneurship. Resources for adults and school classroom application. Feedback survey, because we want your feedback. This is one of very few screens we see the Wells Fargo. And is this program, you can up top to the right where it says English. With the click button, you can change that to Spanish. And this is what you would see uh, if you did that. You click the language button, and you can click on the language button at any time in your uh, presentation or as you go through the program. And 
uh, you can toggle back and forth, but it all depends on your audience or uh, language preference. So screen, when you click on instructional resources, you get instructional guides, and you can get those in English or Spanish. They pull up on your screen and print out selected pages. You could print out the entire document, although I don't recommend it because it is so many pages. It's full of activity and curriculum. Also, the school program for kids through young adults. Our state are aligned with both national and state education standards for math, arts, social sciences, and economics. So, the screen for the new uh, young, the new adults program. Topics, as you see on your on um, six topics that you can see on the screen, but then there there's more throughout the program. So the banking, money management tools, putting yourself financially, using credit, uh, advantage, planning your future, or buying a home are all lessons that are in there. You notice at the bottom of the screen, you'll see tools, library, glossary, and search. Tools button has calculators in it. So there's ATM simulation, there is a basic calculator, and there's also what one thing I like in particular, you can identify the cost of a loan. Calculators tool. Library has extended resources for use on money management. I'll give you an example of those in a, in a couple of uh, slides coming up. There's a library that has a lot of the financial terms that individuals would want to know. And there's a search function uh, that kind of gives you uh, how you find where you like to go. Young Adults page. You see bright colors, video animation. Uh, the format is geared for young adults between the ages of 15 and 21. It's, um, as you'll know, it's a very transitional stage of of life anyway, where many people are trying to make certain decisions about what to do next. Have interactive activities and self assessments. Um, this is a typical point in, in many people's lives where, they are, uh, where their disabilities are not, where they are also going through transition. So a lot of the lessons deal with that. How did your paycheck, for example, is, is in there? How to use credit responsibly. This has been really good also for high school classrooms. Uh, that's when we, we realize that there's so much that they still are hungry for when it comes to financial education. Teen section. It's this for sixth to eighth graders primarily. It's designed to feel like a video game. Game. So if you give your clients <clears throat> an example, like to point and click and, and play a video game, that may be where you would like to start with them. The animated narrator, Angie, is, uh, considers herself an outgoing, money-savvy teenager and she helps students through um, this segment. These cover... The importance of establishing a savings account, setting up a budget, learning how to determine needs versus wants when it comes to spending money. And special attention in this area has been given to ensuring 
that all these lessons are with the educational standard. One is for kids. And in the kids section is designed for fourth and fifth graders. A friendly space alien named Zing who them on an informative tour of management basics. Found that these lessons are good for either an entire family uh, through or anyone at any age. And we make no assumptions as to what level people are when they need the financial education. Now, this glossary. Glossary, as I mentioned previously, uh, takes into consideration that individuals want to know the meanings of words that we throw out on a regular basis. But here's what section looks like. You click on the letter uh, up top, and it will, you know, maybe take you to something in particular that you may be looking for you, as I said, a shot of the library. This is a library where you can find more articles if you maybe back up of the points that you would like to make as you make as you go through at a live presentation um, or a classroom setting if you'd like. So to hands on banking easy. It is, uh, you can go to the website at www.handsonbanking.org and you can immediately access it in English or in Spanish. English is banking.org. The Spanish site, if you want all Spanish, is www.elfuturoandusanos. I'm sure you all are very impressed with that. Uh, dot org. There's also a CRM that can be ordered for uh, at hobcd at wellsfargo.com. And then, as I mentioned, there are instructional videos that you can work from very easily. Okay. Again, as I said, to wrap up, three. And financial education is so important for all of us. We want it accessible for everyone. I know that the um, hand banking was going through some reactions in order to uh, ensure access to the uh, disabilities community. Some of that has happened. The HTML version is in it, but they're still enhancing. And as soon as that has happened and it's all finalized, I'll make sure that uh, that mobile knows and can certainly pass that information on to you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, um, for sharing information with us on hands-on banking. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, we can to questions and answers because I know we have several questions um, uh, that have come in. Um, I just want to share a, a little bit uh, additional information. So now we've learned about these two programs. Both of them are free um, that people can access. So you might be wondering, how can we use this? Or, or what's the best approach for me to take one of these curriculums and, um, or financial education programs and um, share it with individuals that I work with um, or my family? member, um, or let's say I have a group of buddies that um, wants to get together and we want to talk about financial education. I put together here some 
tips providing financial education to persons with developmental disabilities. Um, I've had the great pleasure of, of spending a lot of time on financial education um, from my graduate work um, uh, in human behavior and looking at the three forms of social support and behavior economics. Um, and uh, then, of course, going through and, and being a financial education provider, um, a trainer, um, and now to my work at NDI. So financial education is something that I'm extremely passionate about um, and um, I've had had a, a good time in, in working with individuals and implementing financial education into their system. Um, and so a couple of the tips that I wanted to share and, and you know, could go on and on, but I narrowed it down to these six. Um, it's first of all is to make sure that the topics are relevant to the individuals that you're working with. Um, oftentimes as we go um, uh, around and we talk about financial education and we talk about some asset building programs um, like an individual development account and, and if somebody accesses an IDA, there's a financial education component to it, and sometimes they have a specific uh, curriculum that they have to follow. Um, but when we look at um, uh, financial education for individuals, we got to that the topics are relevant. Because, for example, a 401k, um, if we did a whole section on 401ks, that may not be uh, as important to an individual who is receiving a means-tested benefit um, uh, because they may not be able to access that. So we might lose an individual um, when we're doing certain topics. So we want to find those topics that, um, you know, meet them um, where we're at. One of the reasons we like Money Smart and we also like hands on banking is that they are flexible. Um, they are flexible curriculums uh, that you can access um, and they're broken down in the various topics um, to be able to, to look at. Um, the next tip to give you is be creative and make it extremely interactive. Um, I think, um, you know, uh, as, um, as we learn, as a, uh, you know, we learn um, with games. Um, you know, we, as children, we learn through play. Um, as adults, I think we still learn um, through play or through activities as well. Um, and so we want to make sure that it's as creative and make it as interactive as, um, as we can. Um, and it really keeps individuals' attention um, but also it reiterates um, the importance of being able to um, uh, uh, be able to apply the information in other s settings as well. Peer peer is so important, and so we also think that whenever it um, uh, um, when we look at it, making it creative and interactive, is that um, uh, to include. Um, uh, individuals' peers as well um, to be able to provide this information. It's also important to incorporate financial institutions and non-traditional partners in the delivery of the curriculum. And I want to give you an example. We did a pilot project with Transition Youth um, uh, four years ago, I believe it was, um, and we um, brought in personal bankers to come in and talk about financial education, to come in and talk about personal banking. Um, fortunately, the personal banker um, was closer to their age from the financial institution. And, um, when, and, and so they were able to learn from somebody who was their peer um, on the importance of banking. And it also gave them the opportunity to kind of um, uh, ease the, um, kind of the fear of using a bank and going to the bank that they knew somebody there that they could access. So it enhanced the learning process when we were talking about the importance of being banked. One of the interesting pieces about that is, is that even when I see those students who are, are adults um, uh, now, um, they still remember um, the personal banker, and her per the personal banker's name was Rebecca, and they always asked me about Rebecca and, um, uh, and what they had learned from her. So peer-to-peer -peer is very important, and she was um, with a financial institution, so it's really important to incorporate others um, into, into the, the conversation. The other piece of that is it's so important with the disability community, we talk about inclusion, and so it introduces them to community partners that they can access, that they can reach out to.
Um, next uh, tip here is use social media outlets, including text messaging campaigns. Um, we were working with another group of students, and um, what was interesting is that um, uh, they would not respond um, uh, to me during the pilot project via email, um, but they did respond to me um, through their Facebook pages or through um, uh, text messaging. Um, so definitely don't underestimate the use of social media outlets um, to be able to deliver financial um, education. The, the next that I have here is incorporate activities with support systems. Another reason that we look at FDIC's Money Smart and we also look at hands-on banking is the other activities that are there that are available. So if we're offering this in a, um, a, a setting of a class Room setting, um, or we're working one on one with an individual, we can easily pull out additional copies or other tools that allow the individual to take the information home, um, to either work, um, uh, incorporate the, their family um, supports or their paid supports, um, or whoever from their circle of support to be able to participate um, and incorporate these activities. It's also really important um, that if um, uh, we incorporate financial education in community-based learning opportunities. Um, so if, um, let's say one day we're talking about um, uh, our needs versus wants, and then the next day we're going shopping or doing our grocery shopping, um, uh, talking about needs versus wants, and then creating a shopping list or doing our grocery makeover list, um, uh, enhances um, the learning process through each of those um, stages, but it also incorporates different groups um, that are part of our, our circle of support. Um, the last tip here that I shared is use terms and phrases that individuals understand. Um, through our work, when we looked at certain topics um, um, and we used different phrases and different words, and we said financial education, uh, not so much interest. But when we talked about the American dream, that was the hook. That was the piece that um, persons with developmental disabilities latched onto, and then we were able to build upon that the importance of being banked. We were able to talk about the effective way to use a credit card. Um, we were able to talk about the earned income tax credit or free tax preparation services. So it's really important that you get to know the audience and that you provide them our use terms and phrases that really um, relate to them. Um, so actually, I'm going to throw one more out there at you. Um, it's also important to incorporate financial education games and apps. And um, as you heard today from Money, FDIC's Money Smart, um, they will have um, uh, the Money Smart for the smartphones. And then also looking at hands on banking and the various tools that they have, as well as the interactive games um, that you can access on their website, um, is also really important and, and really key. Um, I think we have a couple minutes here. I'm just going to share a couple more resources, and then we're going to go into question and answer here. Um, if you want to find out more information on financial education tools um, and resources, um, you can access the uh, free online course. Um, it's um, uh, at www.floridabenefits.com. Um, this is a free online course on public benefits. It is designed specifically for the state of um, Florida. Um, this was created in partnership with the Florida Developmental, uh, Developmental Disabilities Council. And last module um, uh, in this um, online course, there's eight modules. Um, the previous modules uh, one through um, eight or seven are on Social Security benefits, Medicaid, Medicare. Um, but then the module eight is on um, financial education as well as on uh, asset development strategies. So please check out this resource as well. When you're um, providing financial education um, and um, uh, individuals you're working with who might be receiving a public benefit, um, this is a great tool to be able to review and to share. Um, also, um, it's great for families. When we look at financial education, as it goes back to the first tip I gave about relevant topics to individuals, it's important that we embed information on public benefits within the activities that we are doing.
and programs that we highlighted today provide the flexibility that um, uh, public benefit information can be included. Um, actually, for those of you in Florida, this free course here that you can access um, would be a great complement actually to um, Money Smart or to um, uh, the hands-on banking program um, to be able to use as, as well. Um, and lastly, before we go into um, questions and answers, I want to share with you a quote from my colleague, Dr. Jeanette Hartnett, that I, I think is very um, uh, important to today's topic, um, very important as we're talk we talk about inclusion and self-determination um, within the disability community. But uh, the quote is, is that financial education that's designed for 21st century workers with disabilities is the first step in securing the next generation that is truly self-determined and economically secure. And I think that's a very important point with um, what we are talking about today when it comes to looking at financial education. So with that, we're going to open it up to questions. Um, so Michelle and Bobby, um, I'm going to go through and ask the questions to you, and um, then um, Nakia, if she has some others, will ask them as well. All right? Okay. So the first question that comes in, can a person teach um, this course in a faith-based setting? Um, so Bobby, how about you answer this one? Uh, yes. As Michael mentioned, the um, Money Smart curriculum is not copyrighted, and so you can um, adapt it to your audience needs. We have um, online. We have a um, online Money Smart newsletter where practitioners will share best practices. So you may find some tips on how it was used in a faith-based organizations. And for us, collaborating with other organizations is key. And so we do have faith-based faith-based organizations as some of our collaborative partners. So, yes, the answer is yes. Great, great, great. Thank you. Um, all right, the next question is um, so regarding hands-on banking. So, Michelle, this question will be for you. Can hands-on banking be offered by Wells Fargo associates or team members? Yes. Absolutely. They, uh, they like that. They go out into organizations on a regular basis, and we love partnering with uh, the community and with others to help provide the information. Uh, somebody, depending on where you are, feel free to reach out, and, of course, I can help uh, Best person for you to contact if you'd like. Great. Um, so, uh, Michelle, let's say that um, they have a Wells Fargo in their community. Um, who would be the best person? And, and let's say they um, uh, go to a branch uh, and ask who would who would ask there, or do they? Um, would it be best that they contact you? Um, you know, at the state level. I would say contact. Go ahead and talk to the store manager with whom hopefully they already have a relationship. And uh, if they don't get the uh, answer that they need right away, feel contact me. Okay, great. The next question that comes is an FDIC question. Um, um, Bobby, is, the, is FDIC aligned with the state education standards? Um, yes, the question, um, the answer is yes. Um, the Money Smart for young adults is aligned with state um, relevant state educational standards, and we constantly um, update our curriculum based on regulation um, changes. So it was recently updated um, in 2011. Okay. Uh, great. And um, the other question is, um, uh, I, I can't remember if you mentioned this, but there's a question about other formats um, and asking about podcasts, FDIC. Yeah, um, the FDIC does have a MP3 version available. It can be downloaded directly through the website, or you 
you can order a CD, and I did mention that we are in the process of um, updating the regular version as well. Um, and I think the newer version will probably be released, I would say, in the second quarter of this year. Okay, great. Um, the next question, I think, can be directed to both of you. Um, um, Self-employment is an important uh, employment goal for persons with disabilities. Um, do both of your programs address the needs of small businesses? So I get asking about, um, it, do your uh, programs, um, uh, do you have specific programs for uh, individuals who are, are looking to start a small business um, and how to manage the finances of the business? Mm -hmm. So do you want to start and then we can have Michelle? Okay, okay. thank you. Um, yes, Michael, um, thank you. That's a good question. Last year in April 2012, FDIC did partner um, with the Small Business Administration and developed at least a um, Money Smart for Small Business model. And um, there are eight topics that are currently covered. Again, like the um, regular Money Smart curriculum, it is free, not copyrighted. And it too can be ordered through our website. Okay, great. And Michelle? Uh, the answer is yes. As you see, those could see the, the presentation on the uh, opening page. There is a link for entrepreneurship. So there's an actual module for entrepreneurs. Also, the library mentioned earlier. There are some great articles on starting a business, um, growing a business, and um, all of the the things we think a business needs to do well. So I think you'll find it full of information for uh, new and existing uh, business owners. Okay, great. Um, you know, I would just like to share one additional piece, um, and then I think Nakia has a couple questions. Um, one of the things that we found out, well, we looked at when um, which curriculum to use. Um, uh, do you use the adult version? Do you use the young adult version? Um, and I think both of the curriculums, um, uh, when we decide to use the young adult's version, um, it's still it's childlike. And so um, uh, it, it applies to various audiences. Um, I personally like the Youth um, Money Smart um, program um, better. Uh, sorry, but you know I'm a big fan of FDIC's Money Smart. Uh, um, I, I really like the youth, and I use it a lot even when I'm working with, with adults because it has more color to it. It's more um, interactive, in, in my opinion. Um, and, and that seems to, to really play well. Um, when we are working with um, uh, adults with developmental disabilities. Um, so I just shared that with you, that um, when you look at the various curriculums, the adult version or the young adult version, and which one do I use, um, you get to choose which one you want to use um, uh, with the audience that, that you are, um, uh, are working with. Um, so, Kia, do you want to um, ask a question? I have a few questions. Uh, one for Michelle. The question is, are the library and glossary for hands-on game available in Spanish as well? Yes, both okay. available in, in Spanish. Um, and this question, I believe it was for FDIC for the Money Smart, but I guess both uh, you guys can answer. How long does the training take? Is it a specific length, or is it a sort of a work-at-your-own-pace kind of thing? Um, this is hobby for if you um, conduct classroom training, it just really depends on the needs of your audience. It, the average workshop um, time is about 60 minutes. We do have two modules, our Get Out module and I think Financial Recovery. That may be it runs like 120 minutes, but the thought is that you can, because there's a um, lettering table matrix in the front that tells you which topics are going to be covered, if you don't have the opportunity to separate it 
into two separate workshops. You can pick out what is important for your audience needs that day and um, adapt it for that. The, the online version takes about 20, again, if a person is working at their pa their own pace, takes about 20 to 30 minutes depending on them. And 20 to 30 minutes per second? Per module, sorry. Okay. Yeah. And they have to be taken in any order. Um, and with the classroom version, you can um, you know, be taught as a standalone or complementary to some other curriculum that you may be using. Or let's say you want to cover both savings and um, budgeting, you can put, you know, use two modules together. Thank you. Were those um, the questions you had? Yep, that's it. Okay. So you know what? We have three minutes um, before um, uh, our time is up. And um, so we did want to share a couple websites, but um, I think that Nakia, um, uh, we were going to show the FDIC website and the hands-on banking. Um, but if we can put those links in um, the chat box, or if you want to bring them up really quickly. Um, However you prefer, okay. Um, it's, so here is the website to FDIC's Money Smart um, uh, that Bobby had talked about. So if you, when you um, look on your screen, you'll see on the the left hand side there, it gives you a list of all of the different programs that she shared, um, as well as the community based versions um, uh, that you can access there. Um, so please um, go to this website. The next website, um, our website, um, that you can go to, um, and this gives you some additional resources on financial education um, that you can access. And finally, as I mentioned about games and um, how important games are, um, this um, website, go to practicalmoneyskills.com um, uh, forward slash games, and you will come here to various games that are free that you can access. Um, and um, uh, um, pretend that like as Bank is really good, or the Cash Puzzler is really good. Um, but these are free games that you can access and um, um, really enhance the learning process. Um, and these are also great activities that individuals can take home um, and um, if they have a computer and can access it. And here is um, uh, the hands on banking website um, that you can access. And um, you can access it at handsonbanking.org and um, uh, check out all of the information there um, that they have to, to share. Um, so with that, um, this uh, webinar was recorded. Um, the PowerPoint and the resources available will be available um, and will be distributed to, um, to everyone. You can also download them on um, our website. Um, you can access those. And um, uh, what I'd also like to do is um, to thank my colleague Nakia Matthews uh, for um, all the work behind the scenes um, to help put this webinar on uh, today. I'd also like to thank the Florida Developmental Disabilities Council, Developmental Disabilities Council again, um, for sponsoring this webinar um, and um, for uh, supporting initiatives that really do support persons with disabilities um, or persons with developmental disabilities advance up the economic ladder. On this slide, please see um, information um, on our organization and how to connect with us. Um, and um, at the end of this webinar, you will also receive a, um, power, um, uh, a survey, so please feel free to um, please fill that out as well. I would like to thank both of our presenters today, or all three of our presenters, um, the presenters from FDIC um, and also the presenter um, from Wells Fargo um, to share information on the Money Smart curriculum and hands-on banking. Um, we appreciate the work that you all are doing to build a better economic future for persons with disabilities uh, by making financial education available to persons with disabilities. Um, so with that, I 
thank everyone um, for their participation today, and um, uh, we look forward to having you participate on our next webinar. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you.